fire, fire. Low down and fill. This week on the Million Dollar Plan, a single mom of two and I dig through her financial life, see what we can come up with, and see when she can stop working. She's done a great job so far, and she is with us now. Maggie, hello. Welcome to the program. Hi, Pete. I'm excited to talk to you. We've talked to each other uh, prior to the show starting for about one minute. I, I, <laughs> I like you already, and I'm not just saying this, and it's not because I said something passive-aggressive to you before we started. It's because I, I like you. You seem fun. You're fun, right? I'm so fun. Right? I, I feel that way. So <laughs> tell us what's going on. What's happening in your life? Well, um, I mean, things are actually, they look really good on paper. Okay. I have, you know, I, I feel like I have a good um, long-term situation and a good midterm. I mean, I feel like my situation is good. The problem is um, I really, really hate my job. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I like these. So, I like these a lot. Yeah, good. I'm <laughs> glad. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out, you know, I mean, I keep doing the math. I've done the math, you know, a dozen different ways. And it seems like if I leave this job sooner than eight years from now, okay. I'm just, I'm taking a financial hit. And I know that I would probably be happier in many ways, but I don't want to not be able to, you know, put my kids through undergrad or, you know, not have health insurance which is right. kind of a big deal right now so so, so i've heard um, yeah i have like you know 42 pre-existing conditions oh my gosh well i don't you know what no, good I, thing they're all covered it's really simple i i saw the bill you're good no, anyway let's take a look let's take a look at the numbers of what's going on in your financial okay. life right now you've got a hundred and forty seven thousand dollar nine hundred uh, one hundred forty seven thousand nine hundred dollar uh, gross annual income your monthly take-home pay is seventy three hundred bucks or so you got just under four hundred thousand dollars in long-term savings you're putting about two thousand dollars a month into long-term uh, retirement savings your savings account is about twenty thousand bucks and you're 46 maggie this is really good. I like where we're going with this. Thank you. I'm really happy to hear that. So uh, at first glance, um, $7,300 a month is a, is a solid take-home pay. And especially in light of you putting over $2,000 a month uh, aside for retirement, it's so much so that I'm going to go ahead and just give you your million dollar a day right now. And then we're going to work backwards off of it. You are your million dollar day at your current pace, and that is if you do this all the way through retirement. I know we're going to be talking about shutting this down uh, earlier, mm -hmm. but it would be February 6th of 2025. And at age 67, you would have $3.4 million, which would give you a gross monthly income, uh, or not gross monthly, net monthly income of $8,082 a month. But after we adjust for inflation, that'll feel like $48 hundred dollars a month in today's dollars so the, that's good news right that is good but it feels kind of bad because in order to do that you would have to work and contribute at least two thousand you'd only have to contribute two thousand dollars a month to retirement for the next 21 years to make that happen um, so our goal is to figure out how long you need to work the job you hate is it weird? Like, are you at work right now and you had to whisper, and I hate my job? I totally am at work right now. <laughs> I love this. This is the greatest. You know what? I put a sign on the door that said, teleconference in progress, do not disturb. Yeah, you know, here's the thing, though. and we need, to, we need to lean into this a little bit here. Sometimes there is nothing wrong while getting while the getting's good, no matter how much you hate the job. Right? I respect yeah. that. And, and you're doing it for your kids. I, I'm guessing if you were a single person with no children, that may not be the same uh, outcome, right? Things would be different, yes. All right, so you've got two uh, teen-aged children uh, around that range. And so a big part of this is be able to fund their education. Like, what's, what's the strategy there to get them through college? I have um, a 529 for each kid. Okay. And I, I had some Coverdells, but I recently just rolled them all into the 529. Sure. And um, uh, I, I'm pretty much on track. I'm putting $700 a month in total to their 529s. And I'm pretty sure I'm on track 
doing that to be able to fully fund each of them in a state college. So, so this. With some, so yeah. I think you're an 11 year old, which means she'll have 11 years until you no longer need to fund college for for or her or him. Correct. Her, her, her. yes, correct. I don't know how I guessed it was a her. I feel like a clairvoyant. Okay. I feel like I'm, I've just crossed over. Uh, so that's uh, <laughs> that's good because that means now we've shortened the term from 21 years of needing to work at a job that you dislike to potentially just 11 years. Are you trying to shorten it even past that? Um, ideally, yeah. Okay. I wouldn't. I, I vest fully in a lot of things here in eight years. And so I have really no intention of staying longer than that. So um, you vest, you roll into work wearing a vest, and you're like, hey, I wore my best vest today. I'm out of here. Right. I'm vested. <laughs> right? Right. Well, could you but do I'll that? But I'll be 55. I like it, when people say only 55, you have to understand how relative that is, right? I mean, like, I agree when someone says they're 55, only 55 seems appropriate. But for my 25 year old listeners, they're like, oh, she'll be dead, right? 55. Yeah. I'm with you. I mean, well, I mean, yeah, I'm with you. I'm not planning on stopping working at 55. Can you imagine a scenario in which you go into work wearing a vest and you actually say the words, I'm vested, I quit? Like, that's iconic. It would be completely lost on on my workplace. Which is why you hate it. Like, no one that could pull that off and have people enjoy it would ever leave that (laughs) job because those are the sort of people you want to work around with. Oh my gosh, I'm I'm tickled by this now. I I I think I may need to to lead an entire movement of people wearing vests to quit. Uh, anyway, like let's make this about you. I want a little bit of a credit for that. Oh, please, absolutely. I will give your, your fake name, Maggie, a credit for that. Uh, so, all right, eight years. Eight years then puts uh, your daughter at 19 years old. She's in the first year, just finished her first year of college. But do you think you're going to have to cash flow any college, or do you think you're going to be able to pay for it with the prefunding? Well, the... I think I did the math so that I would be cash flowing a little bit, like the, the last couple of years of her. But but her older her sibling would be out, so wouldn't that seven fifty or seven hundred a month? Or did you already calculate that 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 would be the going? Oh no, to I daughter? didn't. Ooh. No, I didn't. Ooh. This just yeah. got fun. Right, that's got to matter. <laughs> right, it's like uh, sixteen thousand right. bucks a year. Right. So okay, let's do that. She's eighteen. He'd be twenty. Or he or she, I don't know, no one knows. Uh, 20, yes, yeah. 23, right? Right. So he'd be out. And so then that... God, I hope so. Yeah, me too. So then he, there's some funding, and then $1,400 a month that could could go towards that. That's if you're working your current gig. How? So how are you saving any other money towards a savings account, or are primarily your funding, is it going to 529s and your retirement? My funding now is going to the 529s and the retirement. I was putting the $700 that I'm putting in the 529s in savings until I hit my savings goal of 20000 yeah. And then I switched over to the 529s. Well, let's take a look at your housing situation. I know we have a, a, a graphic uh, of that. You have a 30-year mortgage on a $213,000 uh, loan amount at three uh, 3.75%. How deep are you into that mortgage? Four years. Okay, so you've got 26 years left? Yeah, but I'm, I'm paying more every month on how, principal. How much? Um, between two and $700, kind of depending on, you know, how many vet bills I have that month. <laughs> oh, pets are involved. Other stupid things happen. Vet bills? I had a $1,500 yeah. pet month. Oh, that stinks. What kind, of, what kind of animals are we dealing with here? Uh, two Newfoundlands and a bunch of cats. I grew up uh, in Claremont, Indiana, uh, and there was a dog that lived behind me. It lived with a family, and its name was Moon, and it was a Newfoundland, and it was the friendliest, biggest dog on the planet, and it used to lick my face, and um, I think it was trying to get the freckles off because I was very gingery as a kid, and it just probably thought it was chocolate or something, which dogs shouldn't eat, or they'll get $1,500 vet bills, right? 
Exactly. So, okay, so your housing situation is fascinating to me. So let's say, is, is your plan as of right now to stay there for a while? Yeah, I'm definitely going to stay there um, for, the, uh, for the next eight years until I get my daughter out of high school. And then do you want the flexibility to move? Or, or I'm going to say that differently. Do you want the flexibility to stay, or do you know you're going to move after she gets out of school? I don't have a, a firm plan on that. Um, it just, it sort of depends. I mean, but anywhere that I would move is going to have a lower cost of living than where I live right now. You know, I have to admit, I think technically it could make more sense to not pay more on the mortgage if you're at all afraid of underfunding college. But it doesn't sound like you're afraid of underfunding college. It sounds like you're pretty confident that you're on track, right? I'm not really, yeah, I'm not too worried about college. Okay. Now, may I ask, is it because you understand it or you're not, you don't worry about it because maybe you don't understand it? Well, I understand it, and I also uh, I expect that college is not going to be as expensive for me as maybe for someone else because my older one will probably still live at home okay. while he goes to college. I thought you were going to go. So oh, that cuts. Yeah. That, that cuts a lot of expense out. A uh, half. I mean, it, it really does. Yeah. Room and board can can be half. I thought you were going to go the. I don't have to do it because my kid's smart and they're going to get a scholarship. And I was going to say my parents never dealt with that challenge with me. <laughs> they, they never had to go, oh, you know, he's fine. Oh, he'll get money. No, I, I wouldn't. See, my parents had no college plan, and yeah. then I got all the scholarships, and it all worked out great. But in retrospect, I kind of wonder what they were thinking. You know, I, I started this conversation with you today saying I like you, and I'm going to say 10 minutes in, I definitely like you. And wherever <laughs> you work, and not to stoke this in you, you're definitely underappreciated because you've got your stuff together, don't you? It's true. That's really good to hear. I have no reason to, to suck up to you, but I think it's true. Like, you've thought this out. I have. I've spent the last, like, three months thinking about almost nothing else. Can, can you give us an idea of what stoked the thought? I mean, you don't have to get too specific, but w w what mm -hmm. changed three months ago? Um, I ran into just some huge work problems where I suddenly realized I don't think and I've been here for 15 years. Sure. Um, and I realized I'm dying a little bit each day yeah. Yeah. here. So I, uh, you know, I took a good hard look. You know, I mean, I went, you know, I went to Hawaii. I sat on the beach, <laughs> thought about my life. Sure. And I realized that I needed to make a change. But I'm not going to, you know, I'm very pragmatic. So I'm not, I'm not going to take a big leap without a plan. And the first part of the plan was figuring out, where I really did stand financially. I mean, I thought I was probably fine, right. but I hadn't really put it all in one place. And then somebody told me about your podcast, and I binge listened to it. Oh, good. Um, Do the jokes you know, get any better it, as, as, as the show goes? Or are you like, well, that one was funny? No, no, they're pretty much the same. <laughs> yeah. he, he, no, no, you're telling jokes. Look at you. <laughs> they're dad jokes, of course. They know. are dad jokes. You know what? I, I used to, I used to uh, be like, no, they're not dad jokes. They're not dad jokes. They kind of are, right? They are. I had a coworker tell they're me that not I not kind of. They are. I, I had a, a coworker tell me that I gaslight my uh, my eight year old. You know, I make her think that <laughs> you know, and I didn't realize it, but I kind of do. Like, she'll ask me something, and I'll play stupid, like it's not actually a thing. And then she looks at me like, what's happening? And I think that's cruel. Uh, so, yeah. all right. So this is interesting to me. Um, how much money do you think you'll have to earn to continue to contribute? Okay, so eight years from now, you're 46 now. You'll be 54, 54, 55. Um, are you going to try to work to 67, or wh what's the retirement goal? Oh, my God, no. no. My retirement goal is 62. And you, you have a pension, too, right? I have a pension, yeah, That's which in, increases. Every month I'm at this job, that pension increases. And, I mean, I'm, I'm eligible for it right now. If I quit today, you know, I'd still start getting a pension at 62. It just wouldn't be very much. You know, from, from everything you've told me, th your situation is ripe for reinvention, Right? Do you feel like at 40, 54, 55, like the renaissance of, of Maggie is coming? I hope it's coming sooner than that. 
Well, yeah, but I mean, if you're in that job, you're in that job. I mean, we're just being... Right, right. No, def- definitely. I have, you know, all sorts of scenarios that I can see playing out in my future. And, and I'm excited about yeah. the future. Um, it's the present that I can't quite figure out. Sure. How, how much do you talk to your kids about this stuff? I'm curious. Well, they a lot of times when I turn my car on, the, your podcast starts oh, playing. Oh, those poor kids. <laughs> I'm sorry, boozy. kids. Listen to your mother. She's hardworking. I've already told you she's a great person, and she is, but I'm sorry about my dad jokes. Let me see <laughs> well, something. they're going to be super excited to hear this one, but yeah. um, I, I, do, I try to talk to them. My, my older one is um, uh, is Asperger's. Okay, sure. Super, super smart yep. kid, genius, going to do amazing things yep. in the world, but it doesn't really grasp money because it doesn't interest him. Mm-hmm. And so I'm trying to get him interested because if he gets interested, then he'll study it and understand it and, yeah. and do well with it. My daughter is very interested in money because she she wants to be rich. So. <laughs> That's an interesting goal. Well, so I mean, a, yeah. yeah, awareness is the issue here, right? I think parents mm-hmm. that, that shield their – you don't have financial struggles, but you certainly have challenges like everyone else from time to time, right? And I, mm-hmm. I think when parents shield their kids from that, they do them a disservice. You know, like I agree. Yeah. Let them be part of it. Sometimes I pretend like there's a problem just so that they, you know, don't yeah, totally. get too comfortable. Like, you know, oh, I can't afford, you know, that this month or sure. whatever. It's not in the budget. And they'll be like, oh, okay. And, you know, and it's not like alarming. It's just like we're not going to buy that luxury this month. You know, let's wait till next month and see so, what things look like. Yeah. So I'm wondering, uh, you know, the kids these days, you know, because I'm a dad, they got the fidget spinners, you know? Do your kids get into the fidget spinners yet? No, my daughter just asked for one the other day, and I, don't, I have no idea what it is. Okay, so let me let me break this down. I'm very hip, so let me break this down for you. I've heard that about you. It, it's, it's, it's not true. So it looks like a boomer, like a, like a tri-legged boomerang. It's like a little thing. And it's got a circle, and you spin it, and it just spins, and it has no point. It's supposed to um, help those that are easily distracted focus, which sounds like a line of BS to me. Uh, but my daughter just got one. She bought it with her own money, and it's kind of fun to play with, i got to admit. But there's no way that it prevents her from being distraction because it is in itself a distraction. Right. It's like, oh, hey, this bourbon will get you to stop drinking. No, it's bourbon. It will make you drink. That's what it does. <laughs> Do you enjoy a good beverage? Do you like like do you like a what do you what do you, what do you like anything? Is that your thing or no? I do. And you... My my latest thing is um, rum chata. Rum chata. I've, I always I always see the bottle and it's sort of aztec ish mm-hmm. or something. Sort of looks sort of yeah. It's it's kind of amazing. What is it? I really like it. It's well, it's horchata, which I I'm not exactly sure what horchata is, but yeah. that's a non-alcoholic thing. And then it has rum. When someone says something I disagree with, I'm often like, that's horseshata. You know, I think it's horseshata. Oh, yeah. that's good. I'm going to start using that because my daughter makes me put money in the swear jar every yeah. time I curse. Yeah, use horseshata. Oh, yeah. You can just use that. Bree, uh, do you know what horseshata is? Um, no, but I'm here to recommend rum chata and fireball together. Rum chata and fireball? Yes, it's like uh, cinnamon toast crunch, but it burns your whole throat. Maggie, does that sound Ooh. good to you? Now we're doing cocktails on this show. It's just a recommendation. Yeah. Okay. It's like a, or like a chai latte, but also alcoholic and burning and not it, like it, a chai latte. You know, I just realized that we're talking way too much about booze with uh, with Maggie's kids in the car. So let's end the talk about booze. Thank you, Bree. Right. Oh, they're not here right now. But they will listen to this. I mean, so geez. Oh, that's right. So, yeah, I know. All right, Maggie, anything I else I can. I, I, got, I got excited, too. I got another podcast for this. I might grab a drink. In fact, <laughs> I'm going to. Uh, Maggie, wh- any other questions for you? Well, I do have a question about HSAs. Yeah, please. Because you keep talking about those. I love them. And I'd never heard of them, so I kind of went sleuthing to figure out what they are. And it sounds like something that you can only contribute to if you don't have, like, based on your regular... Empl- yeah, based on your employment situation, of which I know, you probably do not have access to one. So is there th- some other way that I could be sort of pre-funding my geriatric years? <laughs> uh, un- unfortunately, no. I mean, you'll have to kind of just save extra if you want to think of it that way. I just did air quotes okay. for some reason when I said that. 
but I guess this is on video. Do you ever watch Pete the Planner TV? Do you ever watch it? No, but I'm going to now. You should. You're on this episode. I mean, not your face, but uh, you know, I'm talking right. to you into a camera, and I did the air quotes, and you're gonna want to see that. I, I'm totally gonna watch that. I might watch it with the sound off, though, because I hate the sound of my own voice. Uh, you know what? I get over that. I, I I got over that a long time ago, and I actually like the sound of my voice now. As much as was why I talk so damn much. Um, <laughs> all right, Maggie. Uh, I, I you're gonna do great. Like I. You know, a lot of times when I talk to people on here, what I'm trying to really, really behind the scenes get to is, do I trust your judgment? And uh, for what it's worth, I do. Like, I, I trust whatever decision you make is going to be the best decision because it seems, though, financially, that's what you do. Wow. Thanks. My pleasure. Keep me updated. And uh, okay. I'm going to have to try that rum shotta, a rum horse shotta. No, I'm going to try some shot. You know, a shot of a shot. Do it. All right, thanks so much. Do it right now. I, I might, actually, I'm going to go pour a glass of bourbon, which is healthy because I'm taping this at 2.57 in the afternoon, which means I have a problem. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you, Pete. All right, that's it for this week's show. I like her. It's, you know, when I say something like, oh, I really like her, I don't want other people to think the other people on the show. I'm like, eh, you kind of sucked. But I like her. It's a good person right there. We need more good people in this country, in this world, just like Maggie. If you want to be on the show, be on the show. Might even like it. Go to PeteThePlanner.com slash podcast. That's it for this week. I'm Pete the Planner. This is the Million Dollar Plan. This is where I came from. Planet Love Tribe, where we drop love bombs, funk missiles, and live in soul shelters. No help to skelter. The heat don't swelter because everybody stays cool. Left many moons ago to bring the philosophies of my ancestors to another place, God. Picked the third rock, gave me to my Earth family, and told me to create. And so I am. Pin in my hand, microphone on the stand. Over vinyl, I command and demand. Magnificence in an instance, I can make you dance, cry, or love. Fly as a dove, released from ever. The fresh is fresh, and you can call me E.T. Word to John Tesh. Let me bless this harmonic presentation. It's amazing, so amazing. I'm the reason. Uh, salutations. I bring you love, Tron. Greetings from a far away land. I am the soul controller. Put the remote down and let me take control. You're now a part of my zone, so enjoy yourself. Love, Tron can restore your health. I bring you greetings. Uh, Salutations, how you doing? And is that how y'all say it? The tinkling of the keys is an homage to the little, little star. I sojourn over poetic descriptions of sound to travel to my other world. Out of this world, spaceship on my arm took me home, filled by the ink and the megabytes and the hypertext transfer protocol, stronger than the Skynet and the Terminator. I push faders into warp speed, glide with ease, creating a breeze they call a black hole, event horizon, no rear view concerns. This I adjourn, I adjourn. It beats I burn, I burn, I burn. This I adjourn, and beats I burn, I burn, I burn. Salutations, I bring you love, Tron, greetings from a far away land. I am the soul controller. Put the remote down and let me take control. You're now a part of my zone, so enjoy yourself. Love, Tron, can restore your health. I bring you greetings. Uh, salutations, how you doing? And is that how y'all say it?